I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, Lucy Avatizian. She is the Associate Vice Chancellor and Chief Information Officer as of May 2020. After receiving two bachelor's of arts degrees and an MBA from the University of Southern California, Lucy went on to lead a fulfilling 12 years as the assistant and deputy CIO at USC. There she led the strategic vision for IT through a digital transformation initiative. Now as a member of the UCLA community, she proudly leads the full range of campus-wide academic and administrative technology initiatives. Consistently recognized for her work ethic and leadership abilities, as well as Bruins are now excited for the most recent and the most recent transformation under Lucy, the one that we're all here for today. The transition to Bruin Learn, UCLA's new learning management system, which is built on the Canvas platform. It's my pleasure to introduce Lucy. Erin, thank you for the kind words. Um, well, hello everyone and welcome to Bruin Learn Days. This two-day event, both for those in person and those connecting virtually, provides hands-on trainings, exciting tips, opportunities to, for support as we share our new learning management system, Bruin Learn. This learning management system aims to provide a world-class integrated teaching and learning experience for our faculty and our students. This new system will help to set a standard for teaching excellence, academic achievement, and inclusivity here at UCLA. With the changing landscape of teaching and learning, including technolo technology enhancements and the impacts of uh, COVID-19, UCLA is committed to providing the best possible tools for faculty, staff, and students. Based on that commitment, UCLA chose to build our new learning management system on the Canvas platform. Canvas was chosen as our new LMS for a variety of reasons. First, it is a market leader known for its ease of use, templates, and flexibility. Secondly, it is suited to address UCLA's future needs through their analytics and support. And finally, many incoming students have experienced using Canvas from their time in high school or their prior institutions that they are transferring from. With the strong Canvas Foundation, Bruin Learn emphasizes campus identity, community, and engagement that is the Bruin part of the name. And second half of Bruin Learn comes from the program providing a student-centered perspective of UCLA's educational mission. This vision aligns with UCLA's commitment to providing students with a learning environment and curriculum that engages them with the knowledge and skills to prepare them for future success. With this mission and vision in mind, the LMS transformation team's goal is to best serve our faculty and students of today, but also future Bruins of tomorrow. This transformation is based on five guiding principles. The, five, the first principle is prioritizing pedagogy. The new LMS needs to create a functional and effective solution for faculty and students by prioritizing academic and pedagogical needs. Emphasizing experience is the second principle considered by the LMS transformation team. This principle seeks to elevate the teaching and learning experience at UCLA by emphasizing an equitable, consistent, and engaging experience for all our users. The third principle is cultivating community and culture. The LMS transformation team needs to create a world-class teaching and learning culture at UCLA by cultivating a collaborative community. The next principle considered is how to infuse continuous innovation. Through innovation, Bruin Learn aims to prevent academic and technological stagnation by continuously infusing industry-shaping thinking and practices. And the final principle is to consider cross-functional scalability. The LMS should enable an enduring and scalable solution by considering current and future cross-functional needs. It needs to be able to grow and pivot where needed to support the brilliant ideas of all those utilizing it today or in the future. The journey to incorporate those five guiding principles and prepare Bruin Learn to be widely used on campus in the winter of 2022 began earlier this year. We were able to bring a small number of courses on Canvas this summer and fall, and with their success, are eager to support the majority of the academic units this winter. For faculty and instructors, 
teaching on Brew and Learn this upcoming winter term, you can get started building your courses now. In fact, all faculty have had access to Canvas platform with full support since September 1st. That said, we're excited for you all to learn more about Brew and Learn. During Brew and Learn days, we have support available here for you to get logged on for the first time, try a hands-on demo, or to ask any questions. Today's program, both in-person and virtually, is a great way for you to see some more of what Brew and Learn is capable of. This event aims to provide trainings to enhance your Brew and Learn experience, share some tips and tricks on how to best use the platform, and allow for users to get answers to questions that they may have. The training sessions detail uh, key topics such as cre creating content with pages, gradebook and speed grader, or supporting the student experience. Today is a great way for our faculty and instructors to explore the different options available to prepare for winter and how to get support during the process. While we're excited for you all to jump in to learn more about Brew and Learn, and before we break for sessions, food, prizes, I want to thank a few key leaders for their support and guidance as part of the Brew and Learn journey. The executive sponsors of this project are Emily Carter, Executive Vice Chancellor and Provost, Greg Goldman, Vice Chancellor and Chief Financial Officer, and Michael Beck, Administrative Vice Chancellor. Both Jeff Burke and I serve as program owners, and many thanks goes to those serving on the Advisory Committee, Software Advisory Work Group, Steering Committee, our subject matter experts, and our overall program team. All these people were instrumental in getting Bruin Learn ready for winter 2022. Thank you for following this journey with us and for attending today's event. We hope you are excited as we are for the success of Brew and Learn for the UCLA community. Please enjoy the day and thank you. Thank you so much, Lucy. And next up, we have Gail Sanford, who will be introducing our panel participants. Gail. Excellent. Thank you, Lucy, for the keynote. And um, Aaron, thanks for the mic. Today, I have the delight uh, of introducing to you our uh, panel presentation today featuring Dr. Juana Sanchez, Dr. Sri Wang, and Enrique Reyes. I'm Gail Sanford, the Brew and Learn Training Manager. And a few introductions before we dive in. Professor Sanchez is editor of the Data Sets and Stories section of the Journal of Statistics and Data Science Education and has been a senior lecturer in the Department of Statistics at UCLA since 1998. She now teaches two Introduction to Probability courses, one strictly asynchronous online via Canvas, which was developed in cooperation with Online Teaching and Learning, or OTL's Dr. Wang, and another via CCLE. She has always used UCLA's LMS as a hub for her teaching, learning, and assessment tools, and she has always advocated for and practiced research-based, student-centered teaching and learning. Sri Wong is an instructional designer with UCLA's online teaching and learning, OTL, and is also an adjunct, fac adjunct, adjunct faculty member with Valdosa State University. She collaborates with faculty on course design and innovative projects and supports the LMS transformation project with consultations and trainings on Brew and Learn. Enrique Reyes is a Brew and Learn academic unit lead for the Department of Statistics. Enrique has a demonstrated history of working in the research industry, skilled in Windows Server, LaTeX, Cisco Systems products, VMware, Docker, um, and managing Unix systems as well as Python. So thank you all so much for being here. We'll cover four questions today. I'll ask one question at a time, and each of you will have the opportunity to answer. First, Dr. Sanchez, let's start with you. What have you enjoyed about Brew and Learn so far? Well, as you said, my Brew and Learn experience uh, is from a partnership with OTL, and in particular, Dr. Siri Wang, who is also here. And in this partnership, we developed a fully online course using universal design for learning. And I'm teaching this course this fall, as you mentioned. OTL, and for those who don't know, <laughs> if, if there is anybody that doesn't know, OTL provides services to present content in a variety of ways in Canvas. And I could not have developed this fully online course in Canvas of all places without uh, Dr. Wang's help. 
because of this partnership, I actually feel that Brewing Learn has given me uh, like a painter's canvas. I enjoy very much the flexibility that it has given me to use a rich palette of teaching, learning, and assessment tools uh, using universal design for learning and, and, and all of them in a very appealing way with all the great suggestions of Dr. Wang. Um, I also enjoy how it is easy, easy it is to move blocks of course content around the course website. I like that Canvas asks me where I want to move, uh, if I want to move a block, where I want to put it. And uh, I can say, oh, move it to module one, and it moves it for me. Um, of course, I could drag it manually, but, um, but uh, it, it saves me a lot of time that Canvas does it automatically. I don't have to be looking for the module. Uh, and also, I, in particular, I like of all the features that I like, which are many, um, I enjoy the discussions the most. Um, and the reason is that in the discussions allow um, students and, and faculty and TAs and readers to engage with each other using the rich content editor. And in this content editor, students can communicate with all of us, we, we all can communicate using video, using audio, using text, using all kinds of media. And in particular, the discussions are great um, for assessment also, and for, for example, for discussing an article or, or discussing a video among all of us, because my reader, and I'm going to quote my reader, my reader is the person that grades the material, says that, um, Speed Grader, which is the grader of Canvas, is great for grading discussions since it puts all the students' contributions on one page for you. So you, so that makes the grading the submitted students' videos and the comments that other students make of those videos uh, very easy, which is something that we never did before. So we are very excited about that. <laughs> So that, I will stop with that. I, I have more things to say later. That's fantastic, uh, Dr. Sanchez. Thank you. It's really uh, great to hear some of those time-saving tips that you've implemented. Uh, Dr. Wang? Um, so I would say as an instrument designer, I think Bruin Learn allows very high level of flexibility about what we can do to facilitate teaching and learning. Um, so I feel the instrument design process with uh, Professor Sanchez in this new platform is full of exploration and innovation. So we can choose the best way to design and to present a course with different options from Bruin Learn. So for instance, uh, we use the modules, um, as Professor Sanchez mentioned, we use modules to organize proper learning paths for our students and to create a learning sequence that supports content presentation and we also designed assignments and activities for both formative and the summer, summative assessment. And there are so many stuff for students to explore and to collaborate. And also we adopted a variety of ways to build a feedback loop and encourage the students to share their own thoughts using different channels. So I think um, the working experience with Professor Centers on this course in Brun Learn is really enjoyable. Thank you, uh, and Enrique. For, as an AUL, what's, uh, what are some of your favorites? Hi, everyone. So some of the things, first of all, um, some of the things I've enjoyed about the process itself so far has been the ease of, um, or rather the uh, diversity in the way the information has been presented to us, you know, the, uh, the workshops, the uh, webinars, uh, recording all this information has made it easy to access it. Um, even if we can't attend all the meetings, um, we can go back to them and and um, uh, view the, uh, the, the the different recordings. So that has made it very um, practical and very easy for me to um, to try to absorb all this new information. Right. But as far as Bruin Learn itself. Um, for me, the, the ease of migration, I, I really appreciated that, uh, how um, we're able, or how the, the old courses, the old CCLE courses, have, they're, you know, a lot of them have been migrated so we can go and see what uh, needs to be tweaked, um, you know, what needs to be recreated. So I especially appreciate that part, <laughs> that, that um, aspect of, 
um, technical support has has um, helped a lot. You know, the the migration for me, um, and the learning of the um, course material, um, also the support that um, has been provided to us has been very um, invaluable. Excellent. Well, I, I appreciate the um, the recognition of those diverse um, methods of trying to reach the. The, the, the project team, as um, we can tell, the panel itself is comprised of various skills um, from teaching and learning as well as the technical realm. Next question, and Enrique, we'll go ahead and stick with you. Um, of those features, what um, are there key features that you found especially helpful or impactful, say, as you work with those migrated content and as you work with um, other individuals on the team? Sure. Um, so for me, it's the recorded uh, material has been very uh, valuable for me. Uh, I, I have not had the opportunity to attend all the different training seminars or the different webinars rather. Um, but so, so having access to them has been very um, invaluable. Um, and, and I've also used the Bruin, the uh, Bruin Learn resource course on Canvas. Um, it's been very helpful because I can you know, go to it and all the information is uh, readily available there. Um, so, so that's been very helpful. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I'm not exactly taking the course as a, as a course, but I, I like the fact that I can go to it and the um, you know, questions to technical uh, or, or act, actually answers to qu technical questions I may have are there. Um, you know, and and I, I can also, just by looking at the, uh, course page, I can also get a better sense of what features are available for the actual courses. So that's actually very helpful for me. Thank you. And Dr. Sanchez, uh, key features that you found especially impactful. Um, you mentioned some, but if you'd like to focus on one or two in particular. Yeah, there are two that I'm going to mention that I find particularly useful. I mean, I, have, I would like to first add something to what Enrique said. Um, Enrique helped me have make the course public. So all that material that he is talking about, uh, that courses and all things he took, um, the, the linking of the course, once you create and design a course, right? Uh, with uh, Dr. Lance, um, it has to be put in the register schedule of classes and all those things happen to Enrique. When we got the migration, Enrique was very helpful also in in helping me figure out why suddenly all my courses were there and what do I have to do. I, uh, in addition to what I said earlier, the two items I wanted to emphasize for me I, uh, are the inbox. Canvas has this great uh, email system where we can communicate with the students uh, one by one. So in, in I can just go to the inbox in Canvas in the navigation bar and I can see a list of all my students. I don't need to know my students' email address. I just click on the student's name and I can email the student and the students can do the same. So all the email for the class stays in Canvas in the course. And, and that is a great time saver. If I want to have it um, not to be notified in my regular email that I got a Canvas email because I may not be looking at Canvas at that moment, Canvas will send me a note and say that there is email from the student. So I can, it's a very flexible uh, mailing system. And that I find that a very exciting feature of Canvas. Another feature that I like in particular is the fact that all my assignments, all the assignments have like a hub. They are, they are in one place from which you can be grabbing them and they are organized in a very flexible way into, into discussions, into assignments, into quizzes, into other items that you can use. So they, the organization is in the flexibility moving them around also is very convenient and saves a lot of time. So those two are very important for me. Thank you, Dr. Sanchez. Uh, Dr. Wang. Um, so I, I was actually, I have been using Canvas, which is the platform behind the Burn Learn for many years. And definitely there are so many features that I would like to recommend to try in Burn Learn, such as 
You can do the speak reader for grading. You can do the discussion. You can do calendar. You can do syllabus. There are just so many features. But if I could just uh, highlight maybe one or two key features here, um, the first is I, I really like how Brain Learn supports uh, really a 360 degrees of communication among students and between students and the faculty and TAs. So for instance, um, in um, Professor Center's course, we use announcement to, to broadcast the events and reminders of updates and due dates of uh, course assignments, which is very convenient. And also, like um, Professor uh, mentioned, if you like to use email, the inbox emailing system of Brunner allows you to send emails quick and without worrying about, well, it, do I get my students email correctly or it send it to someone else? Um, so this, um, and also you can do the discussion. It allows participation, students participation, TAs participation, and also faculty can chime in there. So they can share in thoughts and insights to the whole class or within groups. Um, and the second feature I would uh, like to highlight here is the modules. Um, so Canvas use modules or Brunner use modules to organize content, course content to support a very unique learning path for each individual course. So you can do that by week. Um, you can organize that by theme or by units. Um, and within each module, you can really have um, different items, components. For instance, you can have pages to use the rich content editor to add the text. You can add uh, multiple media images there to support the, uh, the content presentation. You can also use videos. You can have um, assignments. You can have external resources and the materials all to be added to one learning unit to a module. Um, so that way you can really structure uh, the course in a way that you think it's a best fit. Uh, for that uh, course content. So here, I mean, those two features would be the ones that I really want you to try if you are new to Canvas. And you have all highlighted some really awesome tools um, on Canvas and uh, of which, you know, what Brew and Learn has been built upon. Um, and these are all awesome things. Now let's uh, talk about some of the challenges. Um, have you encountered any challenges? And if so, what have you done to overcome them? And uh, Dr. Wang, we can start with you. Oh, sure. Um, I mean, challenges for sure, but this is not particularly with Professor Center's course. This is more like a general, if you are new to um, Bruin Learn, I'm sure you will have a lot of questions, concerns. For instance, in the past few months, uh, when I worked with faculty in our trainings or office hours or one-on-one, -on -one, several of them just mentioned that they used to have weeks in our previous platform. And uh, they were wondering, can they do the same thing in Canvas in Brain Learn? But the answer is definitely yes. And I think that's a good part of Brain Learn because it really allows the modular design, as I mentioned, as one of the uh, key features that I want to highlight. So you can use the modular design to uh, structure the course that best uh, fits into that context. Um, so if I may say here, I would say we really have a great team with the transformation project. And within the team, we have our instructional designers, we have our uh, Canvas trainers, we have all uh, support, IT support, local support, we offer trainings and office hours to help our faculty and students to become you know, familiar with this new platform. Um, so if you have never tried or signed up for any of our trainings, office hours, don't hesitate to do that. And uh, we will help you and look at your course to answer any questions you have and uh, look at the course to make sure that you can use the, the, the platform with a uh, best experience. Thank you. And Enrique, what, what would you say some of your challenges are? From my perspective, the main challenge is, is kind of uh, information overload. You know, there's like a lot of uh, stuff that Sometimes you feel that you have to learn and you have to learn it quickly because, you know, winter quarter is fast approaching and what are we going to do, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, so there's a lot of information that we have to absorb in a short amount of time. And so that, that, that's been kind of, I guess, my biggest challenge. And what I've, what I've done to kind of um, 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 take on that challenge is, well, first the, um, you know, the, the Bruin Learn, the, the, the resource page, the course that's on Canvas has been very helpful. I, I think I already mentioned that. Um, has allowed me to answer, uh, get, you know, 
kind of a feel for Canvas, better feel for it and answer some of the questions I had. Um, an another tool is the Sandbox course. So it kind of allows me to play with Canvas a little bit more and um, you know, test some of the features out on my own. So that's been um, also very helpful. But I, I also want to mention the, I guess, the ecosystem that's been <laughs> developed during, during this transition, all the resources, all the people that have been made available to help us, the instructional designers, um, you know, Brent, um, he's been also, uh, not Brent, Brett has been very um, uh, helpful in answering questions and made himself available to us. So I guess I'm very thankful for um, that, all that ecosystem that has been made available during this uh, transition. Uh, they've been very helpful. Okay. Thank you. And Dr. Sanchez. Yeah, well, of course, uh, as a first time user, I, I found uh, come, uh, Bruin Learn at first. When I started with Bruin, with Bruin Learn, it wasn't called Bruin Learn yet. <laughs> so forgive me if I keep calling it Canvas. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the first, at first it was a little intimidating, but since I was doing this in partnership with uh, OTL and I, I got a lot of help as you can imagine. Uh, so my major problem at the beginning was that I had used a CCLE for a very long time, which is our current, our older um, our management system. And so I think everybody is going to have the temptation to approach uh, Brewing Learn with the CCLE mindset. And I used it a lot, right? So most of my course content. So you, you, you learn to think with that structure in mind. But uh, luckily, I had great coaches in Dr. One and the OTL team which uh, because they believe in universal design for learning and they had this great idea. So very, very quickly, I got uh, fascinated <laughs> with Bruin Learn. So with their help, I started looking at my course uh, with the fresh eyes, like it's a new thing. And to see Bruin Learn as a flexible and intuitive and great platform for teaching that it is. So after that, um, something that new users are going to find uh, hard at first and i still um, sometimes make the mistake is um, uh, the publishing of the course material so when you publish the course material you got to be very careful you think you open it in the module you open the page but then maybe you forgot to open it in the assignments page where the assignment actually is is located and, uh, and that can cause problems, can cause students to say, hey, we don't see this stuff. Um, and so just because one publishes a modules page, and like Dr. Wan said, we have modules in the course um, containing an activity, doesn't mean that the activity could have been open, has been open. So that's, that's something that um, I, I warn first users to pay attention to. Also with external tools, which is, uh, Bruin Learn has some really nice tools that I use in the course. Um, uh, there is sometimes a feature such as you have to open the page in a, the activity in a separate uh, page of the browser. And that sometimes one forgets those things. So at the beginning, there is these things that pretty soon they will become like riding a bicycle. They will become embedded in your brain and you will never forget them anymore. But uh, those are little dangerous things <laughs> to keep an eye on and, uh, and getting used to the settings, right? There is a lot of fascinating settings that one can use to make the experience for the students wonderful. And um, being good at those, like setting uh, what you want to do uh, is important. And I have got a lot of help from Dr. Wan throughout the whole process. So every time I needed something, I will just contact her and she immediately will, will give me tons of feedback, much more than was needed. So I learned a lot. So I'm, I've been very blessed, I think. So I recommend everybody to use all the facilities that Bruin Learning is offering because I find them all the help and everything. and. But of course, I got a special treatment because I got Dr. Wang. <laughs> so, uh, but she, everybody can have Dr. Wang and OTL. So, and, and Bruin learned help. So, I think I recommend, I highly recommend it when you reach out if you are having questions because it's, it's, it pays a lot. And that's it for challenges. 
I overcame all my challenges. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> uh, and that congratulations on launching, um, you know, your fall course uh, statistics, 100, uh, uh, 100A, right, I believe? Yeah, 100A uh, probability, introduction right. to probability. Yeah, and um, with with that, so this is fall, and, and that's excellent that you've transitioned your materials um, as well, and that you've got comfortable in the system. Now, um, Dr. Sanchez, what are you looking forward to in the future about Brew and Learn? Well, I am excited about the future now that the basics are, are there, and um, I'm looking forward now to create a question bank um, inside Canvas, uh, inside Brew and Learn using Canvas facility because um, there is a lot in terms of quiz making that uh, Bruin Learn offers. So it's, it's a great feature. And uh, I would like also new external uh, learning tools, new ones to explore, to seek out, they can help me with my teaching. And um, that would be great. Uh, being in the math, not math, but because we are data science, but uh, being within the community that uses LaTeX a lot for typing equations, we have to type a lot of math in our questions. It would be great if there was uh, an equation writing, if LaTeX editor was more flexible than the current one. <laughs> so that will make it much easier and less time consuming to prepare questions. One thing that detracts me now a little bit from creating uh, the test bank inside is the time that it will take to, to get all those math symbols in. <laughs> and, um, and then there are little things that I think uh, with more homework uh, um, and, and things that I haven't used yet that I would like to use, of course. I, I haven't, we haven't been able to use everything. I, I've learned a lot, but there is still many more features that Dr. One offers, such as peer review and uh, setting groups and things like that. I'm, I'm really looking forward to using more of those. And it's there. I just need to become, um, have time to include them because we included so many things already. <laughs> so it has to be tried later. Yeah. Lots of things. Thank you. And Dr. Wan, some of the things you're looking forward to? Sure. I mean, from both teaching and the instrument design perspective, I think Brun Learn really brings all we need together in one platform uh, with both features from Brun Learn itself and also the rich um, LTI tools that it allowed it to be integrated into. So I, I hope like uh, Brun Learn can be in the future can really be a place that all parties on campus, um, including our faculty, TAs, students, instrument designers, administrators, um, local support, IT support. So all parties, we can work together in this new environment to, to build a learning community that not only just you know, support teaching and learning, but what's more important is to encourage um, innovation and collaboration. Um, and from where students can make the connections between their UCLA's unique learning experience and their future career. Thank you. And uh, finally, Enrique, to end on you, what are some things you're looking forward to? Well, from a support perspective, um, I hope that after the uh, migration has completed and everyone is on board and everyone is um, uh, using it, uh, I hope that we maintain a, a community that will that's similar to the community that we had in CCLE where we had sort of a support community that would meet once a week and would uh, discuss you know, issues, experiences, um, uh, what kind of things that they're running into in their local support communities, lo uh, different departments. So I think that was important because you know, sometimes it's important to talk about issues that come up, what's being done to address them, or are there workarounds? Are there um, you know, maybe th suggestions that other people have from their experiences and things that they've done to address those issues? So that was uh, very important. That was very valuable. Um, and I hope that, you know, I, I know that right now that, eco that ecosystem, that community exists because of the transition and the migration. So I hope that um, that community um, uh, is is kept after the the, the migration. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, uh, and that's uh, you. You all have re really highlighted um, a lot of the advantages um, and some of the challenges that we've all encountered over the past few months. 
And with that, um, thank you. I appreciate uh, you sharing your experiences with Brew and Learn and the collaboration between the teaching, learning, and the technologies which you all embody. Um, it's very much appreciated and thank you for that insight. Uh, there will be a Q&A portion um, uh, following this, so please think on what was shared today uh, in the panel and please drop your questions in chat and we'll get to that um, in the next, um, after this next section. Thank you to all of our panel participants for your great expertise and insight into Brew and Learn. Much appreciated. And now in this next section, Gail will join us again and provide us with a quick start of Brew and Learn, um, as well as a, a quick tour and some tips to help you get started in preparing course materials for the winter term. Gail. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, and as you know, as Enrique and Dr. Sanchez and Dr. Wong mentioned, that there's a lot of things involved in this, but you could take um, some pretty simple steps at this point just to get familiarized with the platform. And that's really what the next few slides will talk about. To get started, um, I think just embedding that um, brewandlearn.ucla.edu site in sort of your memory, that is our institutional site for accessing uh, your dashboard in Canvas. So you will uh, navigate to brewandlearn.ucla.edu and log in using your UCLA login ID credentials as well as your multi-factor authentic authentication. And one of the first things we recommend you do after that is really customizing the notifications that you'll receive for your courses. Canvas does include a set of default preferences and you can change those settings. But just note that when you do change those settings, those only really apply to you and notifications do not control how, others, uh, how other course updates are sent to others. This is also a step that you can encourage students to do when they first log into Canvas. So they receive those timely updates via their, their preferred contact methods. And to customize those notifications and settings, you'll click on the account tab or icon at the left um, of Brew and Learn. And again, you can get to that after you've logged in. So once you've done, once you've logged in, um, you will see uh, your dashboard. Thanks. And the dashboard uh, really is represents uh, represents the top 20 courses you'll see. Each course is represented here by a course card, and course cards are customizable. By default, um, as I mentioned, the dashboard will display up to 20 courses and instructors will see two sections, published and unpublished courses. Courses listed um, with a registrar will automatically populate to the dashboard in the unpublished section and refresh hourly. Courses and collaboration, collaboration sites migrated from CCLE also appear under unpublished courses. To open a course, you'll click on a course card and this launches course specific um, options such as the syllabus, files, grades, um, and discussions. Please note that students will not be able to see these courses unless they are published. And in preparation of publishing winter course materials, there are several things you can do. Um, first, if instructor, uh, excuse me, first, if instructors have CCLE migrated content, they can review those materials in the unpublished course section. And support is always nearby, um, as Enrique mentioned, that there is a full ecosystem dedicated to support, um, starting with browsing those help materials, as he mentioned, the Brew and Learn resources. There's how-tos and live training workshops listed there as well. Then starting with migrated content is one of three ways that instructors can build winter materials. There's also the option to build from scratch or to work from a UCLA template. 24 seven chat is always available in Brew and Learn and you join um, and you can actually join our virtual QA uh, or question um, drop-ins today um, and tomorrow between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you are on campus, uh, welcome back. Drop by our tents at Coral Tree Walk, Courts of Sciences um, and Dick Dixon Court North for some free, pri uh, for some free prizes. Um, and next, uh, finally, do do hit us up, but um, next, Erin will open up the floor for questions you may have. Thank you so much, Gail. As she mentioned, I am opening the floor up now for any questions that you may have. We have experts from across the team who are here to answer those questions. From the academic team, we have Mike, Mark Kaiser. We've got um, Ajit as well, our technical lead. Um, we've got Mike Wood, who is here from our Center of Excellence team, as well as some organizational change management folks. So please feel free to raise your hand and come off mute to ask your question. 
Uh, I'll start with Jenny. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I have two questions, actually. I'll just start with my first one. In relation to multi-lectures, if all of the faculty, let's say there's 10 lectures for one course, and originally in CCLE, all of those faculty would have access to the course site. So in Bruin Learn, will that be the same case as long as all the faculty are officially listed? If Ajit's not on the call, I can probably weigh in here, Aaron. Um, so yeah, if the if so we obviously Brew and Learn is consuming data um, provided by the student information system, and um, and you know in in coordination with the conversations with the registrar's office. So if obviously courses can have more than one faculty member assigned to them. So if they are official and part of the um, part of the course, if they are uh, assigned to be teaching the course and they are part of the SIS. Um, then we should be receiving that data and those those faculty members, whether it's one, 10 or 30, uh, they should be provisioned into the course um, as teachers in the course and should have all the permissions they need uh, to conduct, uh, well, whatever they need to, whatever the role is within that course. Um, but it really is about the official information because Brew and Learn isn't creating anything, you know, we're not, we're not creating courses, we're not creating faculty, they are coming to us from another uh, source of truth, and that source of truth is the student information system. Um, and so uh, we'd have to talk to the registrar's office and make sure that data is uh, present there. And if it is, it, it will come over to us just fine. So technically, all of the faculty that are listed, their course will appear as unpublished, but it would be every faculty member will have that show up as unpublished until one maybe initiates and indicate that it's published? Yeah, um, a course, so you can have multiple faculty, but clearly there is just one course um, in this case. If there were 10 separate courses, they would all control their own publisher and public visibility of their own course. But with the scenario you're describing where you have 10 faculty members in a single course, any of those faculty members have the permission to publish or unpublish that course. And yes, once they once one of them publishes, um, it will be a visible course um, for everyone else and all students as well. Got it. Thank you. Jenny, you mentioned that you had a second question. I did. Thank you. My second question is, um, Gail had mentioned earlier that all courses that appear in SRS uh, will have an unpublished course site. And in the past, in CCLE, an administrator would have to create kind of the shell. It wasn't automatically done unless a, um, a course already had a site. So did I understand that correctly, that all courses will automatically have their own site? And as long as they remain unpublished, um, nothing, nothing gets triggered in that way. I'll step in again here. Um... There is no doubt that courses that are part of the official um, uh, course offering will be um, provisioned. And when that is provisioned, it will be a shell um, of a course. And that will be the official course. It'll have an SIS ID attached to it. Um, it will be the one where we push faculty, um, uh, faculty into that course. Um, students will be provisioned into that course. Uh, that course will be, you know, well, it'll have the metadata that, that makes it official so it's connected to the SIS for, for um, ads, drops, and everything. Um, but we're, so where does the content come from? So for the winter term, those courses were provisioned, I believe, on September 30th. So you had, um, uh, you know, basically a three-month lead time for courses to be prepared uh, for delivery. Um, and if a course has been running on Brew and Learn, let's say, let's we're just going through the migration right now, but let's just fast forward to next year and you've run your course in the winter and you're going, going to run the same course as a faculty member in the spring, that course would be provisioned, the shell would be provisioned um, during the winter and you would copy the content of your course, it's very easy to do, out of the winter and move it into the, move it into the spring uh, to process it. It just takes a few minutes to do it. And all you would have to do is update your, uh, your, um, 
the dates of your assignments and things like that. There's a, there's, we probably have a best practices document coming out of the academic group to do that. Just one more piece here. Sometimes, of course, um, there's interest in building out course content long, uh, long before the term starts, a year ahead of time, right? Um, and faculty should be given that, that, that ability to do that. Faculty right now cannot create their own course in Brew and Learn. However, um, at, a, at a central level, several many of us can, so you could submit a ticket. Also, the, the sub-account administrators in each of the academic units can also build a course, um, can create a course on the fly anytime they need to. So if there's, a, if there's a request, faculty member X wants to start thinking about building out a course to be launched a year from now, uh, the process wouldn't be, we'll provision it from SIS and then you start because we're way ahead of that. They would put in a request probably to their sub-account administrator to have that course shell just created for them. They could build out their content and then three months prior to the term, um, when that course shell is actually created, they could port that content. Um, and we probably have some documentation. I wish I had it. I wish I could link to it right now. I'm sorry, I can't. I'll, I'll ask Mark about it after this call. Um, there's, it's a, it's a, a fairly simple process that is used on on many campuses um, uh, to do exactly that. Thank you so much, Mike. Are there any other questions? Okay. If you do have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to any of the program members or send in your question to the LMS transformation inbox and we will be happy to answer any additional questions you may have. Thank you so much for joining us for this kickoff. We look forward to seeing you virtually as well as in person over the course of the next two days and celebrate the kickoff of Bruin Learn with us. Thanks again and have a great day.